I haven't been out here yet today. Gary said he did a whole bunch of new stuff. <gasps> a new hose. We'll have to come back to that and see what he did today. Look, it's going to rain, they say. Well, we probably will get rain any time. But let me tell you, hello, it is November. Wow, we are now past the Halloween holidays and we are going into all the holidays. But let me tell you something. I will be gardening no matter what all year. Let's walk around and see what's going on and kind of do a zip through as there are a lot of new things. OK, I did harvest my corn. That was kind of a failure, but even though they were really small, really good. We still ate them, but I'll have to do it differently next year if I decide to do it. Let's come back this way and let's just do a quick walk down here because here is where I'm going to work very slowly. Isn't the peppers gorgeous, the black cobras? Over the winter, because we're going to be in the winter next month. So here I'm going to go through, I'm going to start composting all these totes. And then come spring, I'm just going to start dropping in vegetables that we like to eat. I don't want to waste my time with a lot of stuff. I may experiment with some. But I want to really grow what we eat. We grow tomatoes. As you can see, we've been picking a ton of tomatoes off of that plant. We grow and use a lot of squash, onions. I want to get a lot more things like that. I've got so many things that are just growing that I mean, I can use the purslane, but it's just coming up. And when it looks green, I leave it. Well, no, I'm going to start changing. Yes, that avocado tree is still there. And I'll kind of decide what I'm going to do. And here I've got carrots. That's fun. I want to get more carrots in the totes. Now these reseeded, as you can see, those are all seeds there. And I should get the sunflower out of there too. And I'm growing carrots on their own. It looks like the basil, purple basil. So it just comes up on its own. It falls, it grows, I pick and we eat, which is really good. But I, I want to get a little more efficient and analyze a little bit more as I go. You know, that's the wonderful thing about gardening. That is what's so exciting. When you're doing your own gardening, you're going to do it the way you want. And you can change things. It's not like, oh, I'm going to plant carrots here. I have to do carrots. You don't want to do carrots? Do squash. Do something exciting you've never done before. Do whatever it is you want to do. I never even got to this this year. I had beautiful green basil that has now disappeared. It's going to be compost soon, but look at all the seeds. I don't even know if there's a lot of seeds on here because the birds come to this. And they just eat. Oh, no, there's seeds. And I'll end up with more. So I should pick a lot of that. And what I could do, the lazy way of collecting seed, is just pick that, scrape off a whole bunch of the seeds, put it in a bucket, and then come spring or any time, just throw them in a tote, and whatever grows, grows. The tomatoes, I'm going to clean that up and leave it because it's been doing pretty good. And then I'll get to this whole thing later. The first year I put this up, it was beautiful. And then when you let things regrow that was there already, it's kind of like, eh. I mean, it was OK. I still have plenty of food. I mean, as far as you can see, all this stuff growing here is food. I've got walking onions through here, garlic chives, tomatoes, green sorrel. I've had squash. There's eggplant down there. There's uh, papalo. I mean, this is all food. There's no real weeds. There is some sow thistle in some places. I leave that for the birds. But this is, you know, something we can all use. So all in all, it's OK. Let's go into the front yard. Now, the front yard, this is the front yard. I think I'm going to start changing things up. I'm going to cater to this bed. And now I'm going to leave some of this. I've got purple tree colored in there. I've got parsley, tomatoes. I think this is broccoli. If it's not, it's a, it could be a kale. And I'm going to go through here. I had squash. It died back. I'm going to get this planted up every year. And then here, I can just put pots, different things around. I've got my lime. This is my finger lime. We've been picking them, and it's really good. And I never got to all of those. So I'm going to analyze what I, I'm going to tell you something. This is a lot of work for one person, all these different gardens. So I'm going to make life easier by planting things that are going to stay put. And so I think for the front yard, maybe I'll put more tree colored and things back here. And remember, these trees have gotten so massive now that I get a lot of shade here. So I have to really think about what I want to put here and maybe some more flowers. And then here I can use this for potting. I can use this for planting other plants. Right now I started some more potato mint. And then I've got the roselle red flowers coming in here. These are probably tomatoes starting. So I can use that. And here I never planted that. I may take those out, dump everything out, 
compost it and then maybe do lettuce in those little trays. So I'm gonna analyze in here what to do. Though, even though I didn't do too much in this yard this past spring, I still have all food. I mean, this is all green. So when I come in the morning to make breakfast, sometimes I just walk in here and I grab some tree collard and grab some different kale. And then of course we've had tomatoes on here and we had squash growing. So it's, it wasn't a lose-lose, it was still a win-win. I just didn't put a ton of effort in. Oh, look at my pot. Cute. I found that at the thrift store and I really like it. I put a geranium in there. Okay, and then down here, I'm really happy with the ginger and turmeric garden. So happy I'm going to make more. Ginger and turmeric is wonderful to add into your food. Okay, all you have to do is chop it up. No matter what you're cooking, you add it in. I made some cookies last night and I had ginger in the freezer, so I grated ginger and put it in. Turmeric, you use that like any other vegetable because it doesn't have much of a taste. It tastes like carrots. So you can put the turmeric in anything. And I have found, as far as being good for your health, when I put it in a stir fry, that's when I notice that any joints that may hurt, they don't hurt. So it seems like putting it in with a little bit of butter or oil and black pepper, it really works better. If you take ginger and you drink it as a shot, just on its own, you won't get that many effects. So ginger is gonna be the same way, I believe. So I've been adding that into a lot of stuff. But this is the turmeric, it's still going strong. Probably will completely die back it, it's hard to say, it depends on the weather. As soon as it gets cold, it will die back. So it could be January. If we got hit with a really big cold spell in December, it could be December. And then this is the ginger. See, the ginger has the skinny leaf. See how skinny it is? And then your turmeric's got the wide leaf. I still have the black turmeric. See, they've got a different color leaf. And then I have my stevia in the back. It's gone the flower. And then yes, some pink zinnias, and they've been reseeding themselves and coming up. So this will be fun later on when I harvest it. I do want to talk about it because a few of you have been asking me about harvesting it and the shoulders coming up and all that. You know, that's a video in itself, whether you should cover it or not. And you, it doesn't matter. That's up to you, but I'll, I'll explain more why maybe I would cover it. And then as far as harvesting it, I would not harvest what you see here. The only thing I would harvest is what I want to use. I personally, would never go through here and harvest the whole thing just to harvest it. I could, but boy, would I be losing a lot because these plants are still growing. And when they're growing, they're putting all the nutrients back. So we'll talk about that another time. Here's a yellow zinnia, and this is just some walking onions. I find them, I drop them in a cup, and then I just, you know, plant them somewhere. I've got the turmeric. I know I said I wouldn't plant them in a tote. The turmeric is growing in a bucket my two system bucket. And then I've got some ginger now coming up. If they're struggling because the weather's starting to change, but they're coming up and they're in the tote. Because remember, ginger grows on the surface, turmeric takes the whole pot. So if you're into digging, plant it whatever way you want. So let's go into the bird garden now. Look at this compost. Look at all kinds of stuff. You know what that is? I bought some gluten-free cookie dough years ago. Yes, years ago, and it was in the freezer. And I thought, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to make it. So I took it out of the freezer this morning and threw it in the compost. Oh, this needs water. This might be on its way out. It's very, very big, and it's struggling a lot. I've been watering it. The baby that came from this one is doing fine because peace fell there. But sometimes when they get really big, and if they can't find enough water, they die back, the tree colors. And sometimes they're just at the end of life. But look at all the cuttings. So I'm gonna to have to get, look at this. These are like 100 cuttings in here. These are all plants that can be propagated. So if this plant looks like it's not gonna come back after a good soaking, and you know we have been in a drought, it hasn't rained yet, not for a week or two, then I will start doing the cuttings and take the whole thing down because it got too big. See, it's struggling, it's breaking. So I'll take that out. Let's see, oh, we've got some more dragon fruit I've got to get out of here. That's a broccoli plant back there. Once I get this one out, I will actually be able to get back here. Right now I can't. And then I can kind of in the winter go through all my dragon fruit. Look at this. Wait a minute. Oh my goodness. These are flowers that are gonna open. This is not really supposed to have flowers now. Do you see them? There's more back there and look at back there. 
these are all new flowers. Boy, do they do good here. Here I want to take it out and they keep flowering. We lost some of the fruit because the birds found them. And so Gary had to run through and pick a bunch. We dropped some off at my granddaughter's house. We've been eating them, but it's just amazing how much this thing keeps fruiting. I think there's fruit on the other side unless he picked it. There's lemon verbena in here. This is lemon verbena. See, this is a tall plant. There's another dragon fruit there. And the dragon fruit is kind of all over. So I want to go through, start cutting the joints, and I'm going to grow it in a pot. I have a method I'm going to try. So I can grow it in this garden, but maybe, maybe not so wild. Maybe in a fashion that looks wild, but I have more control over it. And really quick here, everything is doing good. I've got the broccoli still growing. I've got my mushroom plants coming back. It kind of died back a little bit at the end of summer. And all this has to be cleaned up and I still want to do this. But I, this I don't care about if it goes wild. Chocolate mint. See, I have been picking. Taking anything brown and picking it up. Because this is the bird garden. My polka dot plant. You know about that. You go in the spring and buy a whole tray for like $3. Or you go inside and buy the polka dot plant. One plant at a time for eight. But the tray has dozens and dozens. It's amazing. See, this is what this is. This is more wild. A lot of these solar fountains will not be going because it's cloudy and it is going to rain soon. This garden, I want not too disturbed. I want this to be where the birds can come in. I feed them all day and they've got flowers, the hummingbirds, and they have places to hide. Because remember, if you want to feed birds, the thing is they need not just food, and water but they need shelter and places to hide they need some place that they can dart into even if it's look at this look at this giant tree collard even if it's someplace like this they can grab onto they can hide in there see they're zipping around right now as we're standing here i don't know if you saw them but they're zipping all over because they're waiting for me to move i'm looking to see where they are i hear them i hear them the little noises from the birds that are out here we have 50 species of birds that come through here small ones and the thing is this is what they need they need a place to hide from me from predators even though this has really helped the zigzag of all these tree branches i put up that has helped tremendously i have not had a hawk try to sweep down in here at all because there's no way to swoop they have to catch and swoop if they can't swoop they don't come so this has worked out really oh, there's a little hummingbird there i don't know if you saw him he came to say hello I know they have plenty of food out the window. I just put some there. But this, is, this can be more undisturbed. And I'm going to get more through here, up against the house. And I'm thinking here, this would be a nice area. I used to have hummingbird feeders here to start again. I've got some broccoli and different things growing there, tomato plants. So I'm going to slowly go through here. Keep in mind again, this is my garden, and I'm doing all this. Gary's got his garden, he does his, and I do mine. Isn't this beautiful? This is, this is like a collard. This is, okay, that's probably a purebred collard because I had some regular collard. And this would be a hybrid of some sort. Not my favorite, but a hybrid. They have bigger leaves. And they've been growing for years. So you don't have to, if you're in an area that doesn't get a lot of snow, you don't have to pull it out. It will continue to grow. It may go a little dormant in the winter if it's cold, Though it does like the coolness, it doesn't want to be ice cold. But come spring, boy, do they pop back. This is my favorite. This I'm going to do a lot of propagating on. You can't tell yet but it's it, because it's starting to get, it's just dark from the clouds. But it's such a dark, rich green. And I, I've talked about this a hundred times. It's kind of like a, a three-way. It kind of, there was some plants that were already hybridized, you know, and oh, I just saw a bird. And then they, they had more seeds come up and then this so they the more flowers and seeds so it's kind of a three-way see here oh look at this this is a beautiful purple tree color look at this isn't that gorgeous some are more purple than others keep that in mind so here i'm going to go through and do a lot of trimming i started you'll see the buckets around here where i started throwing things in there and then everything here is doing the same the lemon balm i've split that and it's kind of died back a little bit it needs to be split, split again here is my baby walking onions that are no longer babies, but having babies. And then this is garlic chives. I should collect all the seeds. Sweet potato, I have never dug that up. 
See, none of the fountains are going right now because of the cloud cover. Let's see, what do I have? Oh yeah, the squash! I've got to get that off. It's been there too long. In fact, I think I will use that today. Let me get that off. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? A cocozelle. So I'm going to just toss it behind me because I don't want to carry it around. And then I'll come back. Hopefully I'll remember more tree colored. This one's kind of falling over. So I'm going to be doing a lot of trimming, which is okay because this is where I'm going to set up more totes this spring. So I want to get the totes set up in here the way I want. I'm going to trim back a lot of the colors that are dying back. They're too thin or not doing good and get a row of tree colored here and then get more totes in here. And I'm going to use the, oh, there's eggplant, some small eggplant. I'm going to go ahead and get some totes in here. I'll probably move this somewhere and then have an area here where I can just step over here and water a bunch of totes off the ground from rabbits or anything. And then I can get everything growing here. This is just so cool. And look at my papayas. These are the small ones, the strawberry papayas. So they never get really, really big. But keep in mind, we've had a drought, such a drought, it was hard on a lot of plants. Isn't that pretty? I see a little bit of sky. A little bit of sky. I see a hummingbird up. You probably can't see it in the avocado trees. Okay, so that's, oh, this is, this is gorgeous. I keep doing, propagating off of this. Look how purple. It's unbelievable how purple this is. And then I've got celery in there, and that's the only thing growing in there is celery, celery, and there is some mint in there. Isn't that beautiful? Here I'm just starting, I don't know what's in here. Yep, just throw whatever I've got and I'm gonna let it compost, leach out, it will feed the papaya. And then eventually when I start to set up, I'll have compost already broke down, even though I'll be throwing compost in totes. And then I can start planting right away, which I plant right away anyways. I know we haven't even got to all our citrus. Plus it's been dropping a lot due to the drought. We've been deep watering but it's been really hard on plants. Strawberries, rosemary. This is just a hummingbird plant. Hummingbirds keep coming to it. I don't think there is a steak in here. Here it is. Uh, salvia, fire dancer. They love this. So I've got this here and later on I'll put it in a nice pot. Hear the birds singing? I don't know if you can hear the birds singing, but I can. Nothing new here, but there are some, there are some pomegranates. And I've got to get in there. I don't think you can see it, but there's some way back. You probably can't see it back there. No, you can't. It's way back there. There's some pomegranates back there. And then there's another one on the tree. We've picked most of them. And then the other day, as I start see the pomegranate back there, I started watering. It's like, wait a minute, there's still more pomegranates? So I got to get that off. And then this is what I hope to lift up later and have a new papaya tree here since I lost my other papaya plant over here. And then, well, you know, we can walk to the rainbow garden. We took a different route this time. So what's going on here? I've got a lot of potato mint. Another thing that I could harvest now, but you don't want to harvest until it is done doing its thing. You want all the energy to get back into the tubers or the rhizomes you're collecting on plants so you get the benefits. Look at this, a habanero from the grocery store. Took the seeds out after Gary, well, when Gary ate it. And now I've got a beautiful pepper plant. Oh, this is on its way out. It kept growing and growing and now it looks like it's on its way out. This is just a geranium I'm rooting. This is a zinnia. This is the new setup I'm getting ready. I put one plant in there and you know, I may put peppers in there. I think it's very festive and I think peppers would be wonderful to put into my bucket garden because we do use a lot of peppers. More potato mint. Again, wherever the potato mint is touching the stem, it will throw potatoes. So all this is a waste because everything that's on the outside draping over is only good to propagate. There's nothing to eat. You don't eat the plant, it doesn't taste like anything. And the tubers are all gonna be underneath. So I'm debating if I'm gonna really waste my time with it. I do wanna keep the plants alive because they're hard to get. I'll either find another area or set something up different because it's taking up the one tote. Yes, I've got a squash, but this one's growing in here with the tomato plant. So I'm not sure kind of how I'm going to do this, but I'll figure it out. But any place it's not touching will not throw potatoes. 
it's growing a lot of plants and I've been taking cuttings off, but that's not giving me food. So I have to think about that. And this is an okra. And this is about ready to come out. Now, let me tell you about the squash plants. See, I've got another squash coming up there. I'm not going to be pulling out any of the zucchinis right now. If I'm not planting, I'm not pulling. There's no reason to pull any of the zucchinis or, well, especially zucchini. You, the other squash you can pull out because when it's done, it's done. It throws fruit, butternut, your spaghetti squash, they're not gonna keep growing fruit. They're pretty much done when they start producing fruit. But zucchini, they can go much longer. And if the weather doesn't freeze, many times I'm picking zucchini right in the middle of winter in 40 degrees, I'll have zucchini. So I'm gonna leave them. Come spring, if it stops growing, that's when you pull it out and refresh in the tote and get something more in here. And that's my pictures, which I absolutely love. I don't know if we can see anything in here. I haven't looked. Oh yeah, there's more earthworms in there. I don't know if you can see. I just saw them. Oh yeah, see? I don't want to really disturb them too much. But what's really cool is when you put these pitchers around, I'm going to show you other ways in the spring that you can make them too. You can take that and dump it into a new tote and you'll know you have earthworms in there, not just in this tote, this teal one, but you'll have earthworms in there and you can dump it anywhere and you'll have earthworms immediately. Once you, you know, once you've got them, here's another one. I don't know what's in here. I see roots. I'm sure there's, um, earthworms down there. I'm not going to dig around right now. See, I just keep throwing leaves on top. What's on top is the top and underneath is the bottom. And it works perfect. Celery, just geranium cuttings. This is pepino. I'm going to have to do more cuttings off of that. The plants will grow for years and then they'll die back. So I want to make sure I get enough cuttings in case it wants to die back. Red vein sorrel and then another black cobra pepper is growing here. And then here was the watermelon, and they're pretty much done. You know, they're trying, but I will tell you they're done. They're not gonna have anything because it, we're going, it's into cold weather soon, and watermelon really needs the heat. But you know, I can do a thing. Here's another one, I didn't even see that. I'm just gonna leave them right now, but I definitely will be leaving the zucchini, even the zucchini hybrid. Now these are peppers coming up, and they'll throw peppers, and if they're sheltered enough, they'll throw peppers even into the winter. Now here, is my tropical milkweed coming up. I had a tropical milkweed in a pot, I think it was here, and some of the, the, from the flowers, the seeds got in there, and it started, I'm gonna leave it. Because now that that started to grow, I started to see monarchs come back. I did a whole video on that. This is the little piece of black turmeric. I just stuck it here because I wasn't even sure if there was such a tiny piece of it was any good. It is. And then of course the tomatoes, and again here, We'll probably have tomatoes all through the winter. Garlic chives on the bottom. More potato mint. This was in a little pot and it took off, so I'll decide, and these are my cuttings. Oh my gosh. I am so excited propagating this way. I kept planting all these trimmings thinking they're gonna die. Okay, so I wanted to get a percentage to make it, and they're all making it. Even the ones that look like they're not, they're rooting because they're growing new growth in different areas. This is a, I think it's a 100s tomato. And I'm hoping that maybe it can just sit there all winter and then come spring I can plant it out. And then I've got all this kale, pepino. This is dazzling blue kale. This is some sage. I don't even know what else is in here. And the reason it's covered is because the biggest thing that takes out a lot of your cuttings or your propagating cuttings you're doing is insects. No insects in there. And I do keep soil in there. Go watch the video if you want to do it because I explained all this. Look at this. Isn't that cool? This one's empty. I have, I'm setting this one up now. And I was so excited that I'm setting up another one. And I'm going to do more geraniums. And I've been working here. Oh, you didn't see the pizza garden. Okay, so the pizza garden is doing fabulous. I've got a the tomato coming up down here. I've got sage, I've got basil, both green and purple. The peppers, I keep picking them as soon as they turn red and I'm freezing them because I want the pepper plant to keep going. I mean, it is full of peppers. If you start looking, you'll see peppers everywhere. Look at this, this whole thing is peppers. As long as it thinks it's not producing good, 
then it will keep going and there's the buckets oh and this was the pepper plant i moved it out of the box garden it wasn't doing good now yes this is wrong do as i say not as i do what you're supposed to do if you transplanted something like this is you were supposed to move remove all the fruit so it will put all its energy into growing a good root system this is a hundred percent wrong anybody that took any classes master gardeners will tell you this is wrong but this is my garden so this is the way i did it so i took care of this i layered it i put a pot here and i water the pot every day i put some water in there there's not even a plant in there i watered this it was droopy it was terrible and guess what it's making a comeback i don't have to take the peppers off so that's my way but it's wrong i'm telling you it's wrong but now i'm going to have what 30 peppers on that otherwise they would have all gone out so what else is there let's walk down here this is like my happy place and i'm actually i know i shouldn't say it but i will i'm actually thinking of making a backside to this garden wait a minute didn't you just tell us that you have too much work and you can't take care of all the gardens of course i told you that huh you think i listen to myself no not enough okay so I've got an eggplant that's doing really good. I think there were flowers on this the other day when I came through. It's probably gone, oh, it's already gone in the fruit and there's more on the top. They were purple the other day. So I'm going to take care of that. This is the okra. I planted some okra a little bit ago just to have some, because so many of you said, what? No okra? Okay, we've been eating okra. I put it in my eggs. I just picked the cucumber yesterday on that. Then again, squash is coming up. I'm gonna leave that. This tomatillo plant is done. So I have to go through, see, and put that in my pocket, and pick all these. And they're falling. And you unwrap them, and you wash them, dry them, and put them on a cookie sheet, freeze them, and I will have tomatillos all winter. I don't know if I'll do another cardboard box garden. I truly don't know. We'll see. This is going to be probably totes. But in the meantime, I'm probably going to do potatoes in buckets. And that will be, I'm believing that that will be the only way I'll do potatoes. See my potatoes coming up already? So are tomatoes in there, but we'll get the tomatoes up. I put some potato mint in here. The only way I can grow potato mint like that would be to completely tool this whole thing. And the reason is the squirrels and the rabbits love eating the green potato mint leaves. So I'd have to really think about where I'm gonna put it. If I could get it to grow here, then I would have a field of little potatoes to take off of that. But if they get in there, then I won't because they need the green growth in order to produce a lot of undergrowth. Remember that. Things that are growing on top need that for their bottom, like turmeric and ginger. They need that growth to produce good undergrowth. So I have to have both. So I can't have squirrels, rabbits coming in, eating all the green growth, because I won't get that much on the top. There's nothing in this tote. It's growing on here and on here. So we'll keep an eye out on this. I've been pulling squash. And hopefully I'll get squash here in the winter. And then come spring, I will just go through and plant a lot of squash. And you know, when I do a lot of squash here, there's really no maintenance. It's just coming out here and taking off all the browning or yellowing leaves and then watering it. So I do like doing a lot of zucchini. This is Swiss chard. I've been picking on this every single day. Bless its heart, it's still growing. One plant and some walking onions. And I'm telling you, some of those leaves were triple what you see there. I'm not gonna go nuts on planting anything in here. So I'm gonna get ready for the spring. But right now I'll leave any of the squash plants these are all zucchini or zucchini hybrid that are growing in hopes to get some squash for the winter. Oh, we were gonna look at and see what Gary did. Okay, so I haven't done anything new here and I've just been picking my stuff. I've got, see this is milkweed, uh, this is papalo, but I've got, this is a native milkweed here. You gotta be careful, some of this stuff is toxic. And then there's another milkweed there and I believe there's one more, but if there's not right now, then that's what I've got. Whoops. And then I've got all the poplo. I've got all kinds of stuff in here growing. And hopefully in the spring, I'll have more flowers. I have flowers growing, tomatoes. 
I, tomatillos, as you can see, all over growing. So it was quite nice. Of course, the black sugar cane, isn't that cool? And my moringa, which got so big and it's growing in a five gallon bucket. And oh, a spaghetti squash back there. That's spaghetti squash and celery. All right, so let's see on oh, there's what's here. I think this is Korean melon and I think we're too cool. I'll leave it, it's not hurting anything. We'll see what happens to that. Now this is new. See what Gary just put in? I was dragging a 125 foot hose around the property every day. And then I told my doctor my shoulder hurt. Well, you must be doing something, she said. Oh no, I'm just gardening. You're not doing anything different in the garden with your left shoulder? Mm -mm. And when I got home and went to water and realized, uh-oh, this thing is heavy. See how far down that hose goes? Full of water, dragging it from one end of the yard every day to the other. And guess what? I'm right-handed. So the hose is in my right hand and the pulling of that hose is my left hand. Gee, I wonder why my left shoulder was hurting. So Gary decided, well, he dug a trench here and he put a hose there. I'm still gonna be dragging a hose, but at least it won't be all over the yard. And he's gonna put another hose bib further down. So I won't be dragging big hoses. So that'll be really cool. That was very sweet of him. I didn't ask him and he did it. Now I've got a short hose here that will do the truck bit. The truck bed is so, so full of shark fin melon, and I haven't even used any yet. I still don't know what to do with it. Full of tomatillos. These are the purple ones. And then there might be some other squash in there. I haven't even dug in there to get in there. I'll see next spring if I'm going to do the same thing. It looks pretty. And in case of an emergency, if I couldn't find enough squash, there's always something in there. He may pull it away from the wall because there's a wall there. I don't know. So he'll kind of have to see what we're going to do. And if not, we do the same thing. You know, Gary's bees are down there. I'm not gonna hike down there because it might start raining. Sage, oh, we'll go look at that in a minute. This has been fun. I can't wait to tear this apart. So right now I'm gonna leave it. Look at this, I have Roselle growing. The watermelon is done. I've picked all my watermelon, even though it is still flowering, I don't think it's gonna produce anything, but I'll leave it for now. And then I've got some red, or at least red vein Swiss chard. See, I'm still getting squash. I'm getting squash. I have garlic chives in there, walking onions, more garlic chives, another squash there, celery. Those beans died out, but those are the red beans. So they will come back from the roots. So I'm gonna leave that. And then the celery, more, more garlic chives. I gotta collect the seeds. This is just a cutting in a pot because boy, do they grow really good even in totes. Just put it in a pot, see the pot down there? And that is geranium. Tomatoes, look at that. This will probably go all winter. So this is kind of wild, this has to go. This is celery, this has been fun. Now these were all the cuttings of the watermelon I did and though it's throwing flowers, were too cold. So I have learned that the cuttings work really good as long as you do it early on. So I'm gonna start doing it early on. Isn't that beautiful? These are purple beans. And look at them. I've been picking them when they're young like this. I can't get in there. And then I, ch I chop them up and put them in our eggs in the morning. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Some of these are really full of beans. So I'm gonna leave a lot of them. There's a whole bunch of them in there because I wanna collect my own seeds. And I thought we grew them before, but Gary said, no, he bought the seeds from Baker Creek and he didn't get to it. See, they're all through there. And then I must have planted them, and I think he took one plant, and then he didn't have time to take the rest, so I stuck, I think there's two plants in there. And then, let's see, over here, this is all turmeric. This has been so great that I would like to put another turmeric table here, possibly two, there's no work involved. Once you plant them, you bust these apart, you take all the rhizomes out and then you take what you want, freeze what you want, eat what you want, then replant, you end up with a field. So this, if I didn't eat any of it, I could have 20 tables once you bust it apart and replant it. It loves being confined. Don't go bigger because actually smaller is better on a lot of these plants, including ginger, because they push and push and they grow really big. If they're too big, sometimes they don't grow as much. Keep that in mind. Oh, I see, look at that. See? Isn't that gorgeous? Now, if I wanted some turmeric, I could reach in there. 
cut off a piece and let the plant keep going. And I do do that, but right now, again, some people show on their videos, oh, look how beautiful, let's do a harvest. That's fine, but you're losing the whole benefit and the whole idea of the plant. Once the plant dies back, everything goes back, back into the roots, back into the rhizomes. That's what you want. Why would I want to chop out a plant that's not ready? It's kind of like picking an ear of corn before it's time. But if that's what you like, I'm going to leave it. And then as soon as it dies back, I will decide. I can leave it until next spring, but I can decide if I'm going to go ahead and leave it where I cannot let it get cold and wet, or I harvest them and then wrap them in newspaper and put them in a nice dry area. Because if they stay cold and wet all winter, they'll rot. It's a tropical plant and you don't want them to rot. So at that point, I'll make a decision on what to do. And la this year I actually planted these too late. They were planted already in the summer when they should have been planted in the middle of spring and I left them and you probably saw the video. It was really late already, but look at all the plants I got out of the rhizomes that I didn't plant. Isn't that amazing? And then here, this little wooden table that Gary wanted to toss out once or get rid of. This did work out really good, but not for ginger. I have ginger growing in a dishpan. I moved one of the dishpans onto my deck, and this will probably either be moved onto the deck or moved somewhere else. The problem is I've given a step stool for the rabbits and they love eating ginger. They can't reach the turmeric in there. So this will be really good for onions because they have no interest in onions. So I'm gonna make this little table right here. I take all the leaf matter off here on the ground from this pepper tree put it in maybe dish pans and then start stuffing in all the baby walking onions and this whole table is going to be for walking onions then i can put another table here or anywhere i want doesn't matter wherever i want up higher and i can get all the turmeric i want well we're done and it hasn't rained yet look at that yes i have this entire area that i could plant but I used to leave it for parking because we had all the parties here. That's how we ended up with all the colored chairs. Years ago, uh, my daughter didn't want them. They were giving off white. I've told the story so many times. And so I took them and I washed them, but you can't wash the white off. When the white's coming off, it's coming off. So I washed them and I had the tester paint from Home Depot and I painted them. And those were painted a long time ago, over 15 years ago, most of them. And I use those for parties and of course all the family would park here. So I'm not sure yet if we'll plant in here eventually. I was going to put another chair garden, but I do have too much. So that's why I figured I've got this area here with all these chairs here I don't want. So I can start taking these chairs. I can paint them, the white ones, paint them a color, go through what I don't want here. I still have a lot of wood and stuff I collected for containers to grow in, you know, totes. And then here, I was looking at this and I thought, this could easily be a flip side of the rainbow garden, maybe a little bit differently. Like this one is a bed frame that Gary found in the trash. And he went, he went to do a whole video on it, but he said it was so hard to put together because of the metal. It's almost impossible to cut that bed frame that he scrapped the idea of putting a video. But he cut this and he made this with just two by fours. And then he said he didn't want it. Do you want it? And I said, yeah. So it's on a couple bricks there and a couple bricks there. It's worked out fantastic. And I'm going to put some totes there. And then here I'm thinking, I don't know, probably some chairs and maybe, maybe some rails with bricks, something different to give you ideas. I even have other ideas I didn't get to last spring and summer I was going to show you. But if I have a flip side, I get rid of all these chairs that are sitting here we're not using. And then the green ones I'll put in the bird garden. I won't have to paint them or anything. They're already green. And the white ones I paint, keep a couple just to have, maybe paint them like I did that one, put it in there and then it will look bushier. And when I look through, you won't see all our old cars. Some of you have said, oh, wow, you've got three cars. No, my granddaughter lives here now and she has a car and these are old. That's a 98. And the other one's a 2001, and we've had them forever. And we fix them when we need them. We don't go that many places anyways. 
So that's what's going on here. So what do you think? Do you think I should put another row there? I think it, I should, and I think I might make an aisle. If I make an aisle, then I can do the backside of the rainbow garden in case I want to come through here and do something instead of reaching. Because if I do it like this, see how far I have to reach? So I think I'll make a space that I can get back there and then it would give me double growth and it would create a little shade also in the summer when it gets really hot because the sun sets over there and it gets really, really hot. A little bit shade for these and then the ones on the other side will get full sun. And by the way, Petitament, it loves full sun. So I hope you, had, you know, enjoyed this little walkabout here in the garden as, you know, November 1st. And you that are doing hummingbirds, we should talk about garden art. I never did that one either. You know, they'll be back before you know it. Let's get to the holiday season. Let's enjoy that. I am. I get in in the evening like now. You know, I go in the evening and go make dinner. And then I kick back and watch Christmas movies. They're feel-good movies. And I also found the great American Family Channel. And I happen to love that one. So I've been watching that. And if you don't have it, there's an app you can get. And it's like $8 or $7 for the month. And you can watch all these movies. It has all kinds of channels. So I found that one. So I've got Hallmark. And then when I don't want Hallmark, I'm going to GAC and watch them. They also call it GAF, but it's the Great American Family Channel, and it's been fantastic. A lot of the um, Hallmark movie stars left and went to that channel instead. There's a whole write-up on that if you're interested. Go read it. It's fascinating on what they did. It's a split off. The president left and built his own channel. It's funny, and a lot of people didn't know. I didn't even know. I just found out about it, what, three weeks ago, I think it was. It's like, where are all these stars that used to do Hallmark? Oh, Gary looked it up. He goes, they left to a new channel. And we didn't have it. So I got a new app. And I actually like the app better than another one I'm using. So I may cancel that app on my smart TV and just keep the new one that's got both Hallmark Channel. It's got Up. It's got, I think it's got Lifetime, which I rarely watch unless it's Christmas movies. And then it's got the great American Family Channel. So, um, We'll see. We can talk about that. And I want to thank all the members again, even the new ones that came on. I added your name to the list. You'll see it now. I want to thank you all. You know, it supports the channel. Yes, but it, everybody that's watching supports our channel too. So thank you, everybody. You know, this is fun. I so enjoy this. And I think now I've talked too much. So I am going to go finish up when I need to do. I wanted you to see the garden. And think about propagating because that's the best way to have free plants and also to maybe winter plants. So you'll have them ready in the spring for some of your favorite plants. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, we should have tomatoes all winter. Oh, wait a minute. I have a yellow squash in here. I'm a yellow one for dinner tonight. Is this it? Wait a minute. I think it's here. There it is. And this is what I'm hoping for all winter. So let me get it off. I have a yellow squash tonight. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I'll probably have some green one. Oh, I picked the other one already. I already forgot about it. Cool. Oh, yes, yeah, she loves her broccoli. It's a treat. Yeah, but boy, do you get an organic chicken cooked with carrots and potatoes and squash. Boy, if they knew what you really ate.